So, Luciana, you've come back to, to Libra. What has brought you back at this moment? Was there was there one big moment or has it been a gradual process for you? I think the defining moment for me certainly was the news last week that the Equality and Human Rights Commission is taking or has taken the Labour Party out of special measures. Uh, and perhaps for people that don't really know what that is or what's happened in the intervening period, the Equality and Human Rights Commission uh, underwent, they did a very, very deep uh, investigation into what happened within the Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, they did it and reported on it towards the end of 2020, it was October 2020. Um, and it was that report which found that the party was, was guilty of having breached the Equality Act and that it was guilty of having been responsible for the harassment of its Jewish members and that there had been direct political interference uh, in how cases of anti-Semitism were being dealt with by the Labour Party. Um, and in the wake of those findings, and the Equality and Human Rights Commission put the Labour Party into special measures. And obviously the party has been uh, through a process since then to implement which, well, what was a, a very extensive, I think, action plan that the party was duty bound to follow. Uh, it was. Uh, it was. It wasn't something they could just pick and choose. That they were, uh, you know, under the Equality Act, they were required to implement um, all this action plan which they've been doing, and it was announced that they've been taking out special measures. So, in the wake of that, for me, that was significant. That the party has now turned a corner, uh, and that things things are clearly, you know, that progress has been made, um, and the party is is doing some really important things in the wake of what was some pretty difficult uh, findings. Uh, that the EHRC found. And how big a role has Keir Starmer played in persuading you to come back to the, the Labour Party? Has the Labour Party reached out to you? Have you spoken with Keir Starmer? Yes, I, I have spoken with Keir Starmer and you know, I listened carefully to what Keir has said over the last couple of years, particularly in the wake of that investigation, that report. He was robust at the time to say that he accepted all the findings that he was going to implement all the plan and I listened to him very closely also when he spoke last week and he said uh, that this is not a moment of ce for celebration but it was certainly a really important moment at which the Labour Party uh, could propel itself forward so I heard what he said publicly and um, yes privately I, ha I have had the opportunity to speak with him and people will have the opportunity also to see the letter that he wrote to me uh, in the wake of the findings and the decision by the EHRC to take the Labour Party out of special measures. The combination of all of those have meant for me that, you know, um, you know, why did I leave the Labour Party? I left the Labour Party because I couldn't sleep at night. I can now sleep at night. Uh, and it's under Keir's leadership and, and what he's now doing. Again, this is not, everything's not fixed, everything's not, you know, perfect, but certainly the party has returned to a place that it should be. Uh, and it's on, on a journey to... Um, to certainly turn things around and that's and we're, and we're seeing i think evidence of that i mean many people and and indeed it's quite a key attack line from the conservative party against keir starmer but many other people feel it quite strongly as well is that he stayed in in the labor party he served under jeremy corbyn in his shadow cabinet and he indeed campaigned to to make jeremy corbyn Prime Minister, a lot of people have criticised Keir Starmer for that. What's your thinking on that? Well, I can only reflect on, on my own experience and what led me to lead the Labour Party. Uh, I was a Member of Parliament at the time. I um, had been re-elected three times. I was an MP in Liverpool and um, I was very active in my time in Westminster. And I perhaps had more, more of an acute experience than most uh, because both of the combination of my experience locally within my constituency party in Liverpool, where I had sat in my party meetings, pe uh, people that had previously been expelled, um, having been part of the militant tendency previously. So I had that local experience combined with the fact that I was then the parliamentary chair, um, almost towards the end of my time in the Labour Party, um, parliamentary chair of the Jewish Labour movement. And so I, perhaps more than anyone else, was seeing and hearing so much of what was going on when it came to anti-Semitism, both from other members and, and combined with my own experience as well. Uh, and so I can only reflect on what led me to lead the Labour Party. 
I felt that, you know, despite my very, very best efforts to try and tackle this from within, and I'm, and I'm always someone that believes in, you know, doing something from within the tent rather than outside of the tent wherever possible, despite my very, very best efforts and all the energy that it took to contend and tackle the anti-Semitism, that not only was it not getting better, but I was seeing the instances of anti-Jewish racism get worse. Um, and certainly, you know, the, the volume and the toxicity of what I was seeing and receiving personally also was getting worse. So that was why I took the decision that I took um, and why I felt that I couldn't in good faith be a part of the party, that I felt it was betraying the values that led me to join it. And I didn't feel that I could go out and knock on doors um, at a general election whenever that was going to come um, and campaign for Jeremy Corbyn to be prime minister. But that that was a very personal choice. And you know, everyone everyone made their own choices in terms of what they felt was right at the time and it was also informed by their own experience and what they saw. Again, my experience was very different to others. I judge people by, by what, not what they've just, what they've said, but also by their actions. And I think certainly um, I was struck by many people's responses to the Equality and Human Rights Commission report, which didn't come until um, um, more than a year after I'd left the Labour Party, which a dive, did a deep dive into you know, just some of the experience within the Labour Party. It wasn't an exhaustive inquiry report, but certainly was very um, thorough. Um, and I think for many people, they were they were they were horrified by the findings of the Equality and Human Rights Commission. Um, and it's and, and and I judge them today by what they did in the wake of that. So the fact and so that that's is that the sort of test you you apply to Keir Starmer? Yes, yeah, so it's not just the words that he said at the time in response to the findings, but also. Uh, you, know, you know what the party has done, uh, and the fact that it has and has implemented um, all of the Equality and Human Rights Commission's you know, action plan. Again, it's on a journey. It's returned the party rightly to where it should be, but there's 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 clearly more to do. And, and Keir himself has said that. But on it, on the party's actions, what it's done over the course of the past two and a half years, and since that report came out, you know, I am satisfied that I can sleep at night and. The Labour Party is certainly um, having having turned that corner is is on the right trajectory um, going forward. And what did Keir Starmer say to you when you agreed and you made the decision that you were coming back to the to the Labour Party? How, how pleased was he? What did he say to you? Yeah, I mean he's um, he has he has he um, has has been very very forthcoming. Um, he has been very clear to say that you know this this means a lot to both him. Um, and to the Labour Party, um, he acknowledges, you know, after you know, my experience and what I've been through, that this hasn't been an easy decision and one that I've come to lightly. It certainly wasn't an easy decision to lead the Labour Party in the first place. It was, uh, it was my political home that I dedicated 20 years of my life to. But um, I was very, very struck by the letter that he sent me. Again, I'd urge anyone that hasn't seen it to, to read it. It's, it's available online. It was incredibly heartfelt, um, I thought. Um, and I've been really struck just in the past, or well, not even 24 hours since since it's been an, um, been shared public that, publicly that I've returned to the Labour Party. I've been struck by um, the warmth um, and kind of the emotion that has been shared with me by people that uh, uh, I think are so pleased that I have returned to my political home. Luciana, we have focused on why you've come back to the Labour Party. Let's focus a bit on why you left the Labour Party. Just describe to us what life was like for you as a young Jewish female MP under that period of, of time when Jeremy Corbyn was leader. Well, I reflect on my experience um, from, it started from 2015 when Jeremy Corbyn became leader and uh, it reached a peak um, for me personally, in 2018, when I realised, well, I say I realised, I came to the conclusion that I could no longer remain part of the Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn's leadership. And um, the the volume and toxicity of anti-Jewish racism that I received um, from people on the left was extraordinary. Uh, there wasn't almost like a, I say a week. It was almost, it wasn't almost like a day that went by when I wouldn't receive like emails and tweets on my timeline, and sometimes also to my other social media onto uh, channels like my Instagram, which is normally kind of a, a safer place. But just absolute utter bile um, 
directed at me because I was challenging the party on, on some very serious issues to do with anti-Jewish racism and that almost uh, resulted um, in me receiving just so much more and it wasn't just my experience it was obviously the experience of other Jewish members across the country of all different levels just grassroots activists sometimes very young people um, but stories that I heard firsthand of people that were treated extraordinarily badly um, and were, were you know felt that they were treated like almost like kind of hostile elements within party meetings um, in certain parts of the country um, the combination of which meant just was untenable for me to remain within the Labour Party. And of course, um, you are a prominent Jewish female MP, Margaret Hodge, Ruth Smith, Louise Elman also um, faced a, a lot of, um, of these issues um, as well. But what's really interesting is that Jeremy Corbyn was, was recently interviewed on the News Agents podcast. So, Luciana, your reaction to, to those words from Jeremy Corbyn, he's saying... You did have some bad treatment, but ultimately you decided to go off and form an, a, a new party. What do you say to that? I mean, let me be absolutely clear. If it's, you know, it wasn't clear with the remarks that I made when I left the Labour Party. The reason why I left the Labour Party was because of the anti-Jewish racism, which, is, which I experienced and which others experienced too, that was not only get, not getting better or not improving, you know, the situation was getting seriously worse. And you know, it's incredibly disingenuous of Jeremy to say what he said because there was a profound refusal by him to confront and deal with anti-Semitism. You know, I laid this squarely at his door. I had a private meeting with him, which was attend by, attended by him and one of his staff um, at the end of 2017 when I endeavoured to lay out some very, very, very stark examples of where his name and his image were being used on Facebook groups, which were just a cesspit of anti-Jewish bile uh, by people who were members of the Labour Party, who had Labour Party roses in their profiles. There were Labour groups using his name. Um, and I, I, I appealed to him to do something about it, to confront it. And um, he chose not to. Um, similarly, you know, I've provided, along with other members of the Jewish Labour movement, a list of 19 practical actions that he and the party could take to contend with this very serious issue. Not one single um, one of those 19 recommendations were, were adopted or were followed. And again, I, tr I confronted him and his office personally when one of the examples of anti-Semitism surfaced. And this was the example of where he himself had written in support of an artist who had drawn an anti-Semitic mural, an anti-Jewish mural in Tower Hamlets, that the council in Tower Hamlets had decided should be removed from that wall because it was anti-Semitic. And it took him and his office four days, four whole days, to come up with a proper apology for his support for an anti-Semitic mural. And I can assure you categorically, Aisha, that that would not have happened in any other instance of racism. You know, the Labour Party is supposed to be a party that prides itself on equality for all, and anti-racism against all, uh, and that certainly was not my experience. I mean, it, it is interesting that that Jeremy Corbyn and indeed lots of his supporters ha have really, you know, pushed back on the uh, report by the Equality and Human Rights Commission. They've pushed back against you and other, you know, Jewish members of the Labour Party raising this. You know, they, they've claimed that the issue has been weaponised uh, against Jeremy Corbyn. And, of course, many of his supporters say, oh, it wasn't that bad. And actually, it was members of the far right who were attacking Luciana and other people. It wasn't Labour Party members. What do you say to those people? Because this is something that comes up a lot. I see it on social media a lot. You must get this all the time as well. Sure. But let me try and address all the really important elements of your question, and they are, um, uh, you know, I'm glad that you've raised them all, and I'll do my best um, to fully respond because they deserve attention. You know, the report and investigation the Equality and Human Rights Commission um, carried out into the Labour Party didn't cover every single instance of anti-Semitism. They took a sample. So to present otherwise is, again, disingenuous at best. And again, they, you know, the people that seek to do this um, are very selective in, in what they present. But we didn't see um, the, the Labour Party going to the investigation into the Labour Party cover every single instance of anti-Semitism. They just took a sample of under 100 cases and there were hundreds and hundreds more. So to, so, so to suggest otherwise is just 
wrong. Ultimately, the Labour Party was found guilty of having broken the Equality Act in at least three instances. Not, not individual instances, but three parts of the law had been broken. One where there was intimidation of Jewish members, there was harassment of Jewish members of the Labour Party, and that there was direct political interference by the leader of the Labour Party's office into cases of anti-Semitism. That is what the EHRC found and had to then put the party into special measures as a result of that finding, having shown that it broke the Equality Act. The only other political party have, has, that has been found to have broken the Equality Act is the British National Party, a far-right party. It certainly gave me no satisfaction or comfort that the party was found to have broken the Equality Act, but that is what a non-departmental public body, a public body has found following an extensive investigation. Mm. And for people that seek to present it otherwise, you know, they're seeking to deflect, they're seeking to, uh, you know, to, to turn the other way. Um, and, I, and I've heard Jeremy Corbyn himself do this um, in public interviews. It's just, it just seeks to kind of, to further diminish what is a very, very serious issue and treats the issue of anti-Jewish racism in a way completely different to how they and how Jeremy Corbyn and his followers would treat any other form of racism, and that just speaks to the problem itself. When people, you know, seek to say, "Well, um, you know, that I've had people convicted from the far right," yes, yes, I have seen, unfortunately, uh, a number of people from the far right convicted of the anti-Jewish racism they have directed towards me and the death threats that they have directed towards me, and I've seen people go to prison because of it. Again, I take no comfort from that. I've, I've also seen people from the left be convicted. Uh, for the anti-Jewish racism that they've um, directed towards me. Um, two cases um, in, in, in that instance. Uh, again, I took no comfort from the fact that in October of 2018, I found myself on the front page of the Saturday Times because there was a dossier that had been found where the Labour Party, under Jeremy Corbyn's watch, had withheld details of a Labour Party member who had made a direct physical threat uh, about me and put it on social media. It met the criminal threshold for investigation. The Labour Party at the time neither informed me or the police about that. Um, that was a very, very serious issue. I had letters that were hand delivered to my office, one in particular in September of 2018, which said that I was going to have acid thrown on me, that I was uh, going to uh, be raped and stabbed because um, of, of, of my actions that I'd taken against Jeremy Corbyn, signed by people that said they were supporters of Jeremy Corbyn. You know, a lot of people do this stuff and they, it's, it's quite difficult to always identify who they are. Um, but certainly from the Facebook groups where we saw all this anti-Jewish racism, again, specifically use Jeremy's name and Jeremy's face as their moniker. Um, you know, I very, very squarely personally hold Jeremy Corbyn responsible. I know that I personally tried to uh, propel him into taking action, but it wasn't just my experience. It was also what he was, and under his leadership, was found to have done to have broken the law, which led the party into the very sorry state that it found itself in on his exit. And so, uh, given what you've just said, is Keir Starmer right to, to, to bar Jeremy Corbyn from standing as a Labour MP in Islington North? Yes, absolutely. I think he's absolutely correct to have, have, have um, said that publicly, particularly when Jeremy Corbyn continues, as he has done, not just about me, but about the issue at hand, to seek to minimise it, to diminish it, and to tr you know not give it the, the, the seriousness of attention that this issue deserves. Now, another thing that I, I mean, there's obviously there's been a lot of you know warm reaction to, to the news which broke last night that you were returning to the Labour Party. Many people have been asking the question, would you want to come back into to Parliament? Many see your, your departure as a great loss. Would you run in Islington North is a question that many people are asking. There's, there's no chance of me running in Islington North, no. Uh, but, I, you know, as I said in my letter to Keir, in my response to him, you know, um, you know, I stand you know, by his side, uh, along with many other members of the party, and people who support the party that might not be members of it, um, to do everything possible to see a change in government, um, to do something to address what we see at this time, which is, you know, such a divisive government um, and a government that, you know, is, is, is falling flat on its face and um, not, you know, I mean, the list goes on, but it's, it's, it's doing so many things that are taking this country backwards rather than forwards. So definitely not going to be running in Islington North. Would you consider maybe standing to become an MP again at some point in the future for the Labour Party? I think there's many ways in which people can contribute to our national public life. You know, it was an enormous privilege for me to have been able to and have an opportunity for me to have been able to 
do so as the previous uh, member of parliament for Liverpool Waybit Tree. Um, but people can make contributions in lots of different ways, and that's not just confined to standing uh, for the House of Commons in Parliament. Um, I, I wouldn't rule it out, but I'm not um, I'm not champing at the bit to go back. Um, I, I think there's other people that are doing that really, really well. And um, and I, I, certainly, if it's not from within the House of Commons, I hope that there's other ways in which I can support the party to really make a difference.